Okay, today is February the 8th. It's finally a beautiful sunny day. We're expecting our purple martins to show up hopefully by next weekend. We're running a little late on getting this done because of the weather we've had, but today we're going to show you how we clean out our gourds and get ready for the martins to come in for the summer, spring and summer. Now, my husband is over here. He's going to show you how we roll, we can roll our gourds down. And my father-in-law made this very easy so that you can just, out here at the bottom, you can roll it and it'll come all the way down and we can clean it out real easy and roll it back up when we're ready. So go ahead. As you can see, this comes in very handy. We're, uh, we're gonna do the top ones first and then we'll work our way down to the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna bring this over here and show it to you what one of our gourds looks like. And you can see this is where they go in and make their nest. And on this side, it has a place where you can take this off. We also have clips on there and that's what we were doing. It, you have to undo the clip in order to get them off. And so you can see inside where the old nesting material is. And so we're gonna take that out. Um, you need to probably wear gloves and goggles or glasses to keep the dust from getting in your face while you're doing that. And uh, then we're just gonna rinse them out with water and uh, some little Dawn soap and uh, put some new material in there to make, and we're gonna make sure there's no mites or mold or anything like that in there uh, before we hang them back up, make sure they're nice and clean. Okay, I'm putting my gloves on. I don't know if you can hear me well from over there, but you need to have gloves on because you don't want that getting all over your hands. And uh, if you have allergies, you may want to wear a mask on your face so that uh, any dust and debris does not get in your nasal passages. Because if it's dry in there, a lot of times when you take it out, it's just dander from the birds and all that will come out in your face. I'm gonna do a close up. We're gonna take this out. And you can see it's just a lot of straw in there. And we're gonna put it in the wheelbarrow over here. And that way we can dump it out later. You get kind of dirty doing this, so you might not wanna wear anything that you don't wanna get real dirty. Ugh. Sometimes you do run across uh, some, a dead bird or something where in the summer maybe the birds have died. Uh, they suggest you clean these out in August after they leave and then put the new bedding and everything in there this time of year. But we didn't get a chance to do that last year so we're, uh, we don't know what we're going to find in here this when we get started. Where did we put it back in here? So I'm going to hang this back up here. Yeah, i got to get it back in Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and put the clip back in there. That way that we don't forget to do that and they won't come off when the wind blows. Have we done all of these? You do the bottoms, I'll do the okay. top. did run across a dead bird in one of them, which is not fun to find that. You might want to look inside before you start pulling things out so you're not surprised at what comes out. Okay, we got all the top ones done, now, uh, the bottom ones done. Now we're going to work on the ones on the top.
that's one reason you want to make sure you clean them out real good and wash them out, especially if you had dead birds or eggs that didn't hatch or something. What we're going to do first is uh, we're going to use just water on a water hose with the water hose and we're just going to rinse them out really well first. And over here you can see that they are putting the water in the bucket and getting it filled up in order to start mixing our Dawn dishwashing detergent in there for later. And my brother-in-law Michael is about to use the water hose and rinse these things out really well. show you too that these um while we're washing them out they do have holes in the bottom and i'll kind of show you if you can see that i can't really there they are so when we wash them out or when it rains um the water drains out really well and michael washed the top ones out first so that um all that water could go ahead and drain down and there wouldn't be, get more trash in the bottom ones before he washed those. That's a little tip. <laughs> From my husband, he's very handy to have around. Okay, Michael has these all washed out. Now my husband is going to take a brush dip in the Dawn dishwashing detergent and water solution and just wipe out the insides really well to make sure you release any of that dirt or mold or mildew or anything that got in there or that has sat in there over the summer and winter since we did not get to clean these out at the end of the season. Now the brush we're using is just a simple toilet brush. It works really well, not very expensive. But it does the job. Dollar fifty nine at Dollar General. Every town has one or two. At least down here in Mississippi, they do.
mile off last year. I yeah. thought we took these things off last year. Well, this sure makes it a lot easier leaving them on, don't it? Okay, now after they've washed them all out with the soap, um, they're gonna go back with the water hose and make sure all the soap and anything that broke apart when they washed it is gonna come out. Make sure they're really clean. Every year we seem to learn a little something more as when we clean them out. An easier way every time. I'm going to show you how the inside is nice and clean, if you can see in there. And we're going to let these dry for a while, and we're going to put, then we're going to come back later. And if they're not completely dry, what we'll do is we'll take a, a paper towel and clean the inside out, dry it out real well before we put the straw back in. Uh, and I did want to show you the difference. Some of these gourds have this little perch on the outside, and some have just a little pedestal thing like this on the outside. They are a little different. And we do hang them in an alternating pattern. Um, some reason my father-in-law said that was a good idea. He's not here to tell me why, so I, I don't they know. They fly in, they're coming from different directions. They ain't all coming in. Well, that's the true. They fly in from, they can fly in and out from different directions and that kind of thing. Some so. of them may want a southern view, some of them may want a northern view. <laughs> that's true. Okay, well, these are nice and clean. I'll get you back on here in just a second after these dry and show you how much straw we put in there. So you can see these. Okay, now that they have dried for a little while in the sun, we're gonna take some blue paper towels and we're going to dry them out on the inside to make sure there's no water uh, or moisture left inside. dried out we're going to let them air dry for about another 30 minutes and then we're going to come back and put our straw in okay now we have got these dried out and we're going to start putting our straw in um we're using pine straw and what you do is just take and kind of wrap it around like a nest and then stick it inside that hole um where the lid goes but when you put it in there, you have to make sure that the nesting material does not come above this area where they go in and out of their nest. So you don't want to put too much in there. Just enough to kind of get to the very bottom of that little area where they can go in and out. You don't want to block that hole. So you want to take it and kind of wrap it around like this to kind of make a little nesting place and stick it inside. We went and bought our straw from the co-op. So make sure you have nice, good, clean straw. When you get it in there, you can kind of twist until you get it. And look through the hole and make sure you don't have it above the thing. You don't want too much. Like I've got a little too much, so I'm gonna take some out.
because this straw doesn't have a lot of sticks or anything in it. But today we're finding a good bit of sticks and debris in there. So just make sure when you get your straw that you have everything out of it for you. While he's finishing up, I'm going to go ahead and get the lids and put a lid back on each gourd. And that way I can check each gourd and make sure that we didn't forget to put straw in any of them before we let it back up. Make sure you screw them on tight enough that they don't fall off. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but these are called Traynor. They're the, that's the brand they are, Traynor Vertical Gourds. Now, we have got these um, ready. My husband's going to let them back up. Okay, now we're gonna roll them back up. Okay, if you'll notice, where he stopped, there's a little hole right there. And um, there's a clip or a thing that we put in there, in that hole. And that way, if something did happen um, and they, just, they started falling, they wouldn't fall all the way to the ground. They would stop right there uh, so that anyone standing underneath or whatever would not get hurt. We're putting the pin in and, and put the bolt on the end to make sure it doesn't slip out. And then he's going to go ahead and lift it the rest of the way up. This pole is actually pretty deep in the ground, um, or it has a base that's deep in the ground and with concrete. So it's pretty sturdy. There's that, I think that's as high as it goes. Okay, so now Collins Cove Farm, Purple Martin Hotel is open for business.